I mean, you see, the trouble, Wally, with always being active and doing things is that I think it's quite possible to do all sorts of things and at the same time be completely dead inside. I mean, you're doing all these things, but are you doing them because you really feel an impulse to do them? Or are you doing them mechanically, as we were saying before? Because I really do believe that if you're just living mechanically, then you have to change your life. You know, when you're young, you, you go out on dates all the time, you go dancing or something, you're floating free, and then one day, suddenly, you find yourself in a relationship, and suddenly everything freezes. And this can be true in your work as well. And I mean, of course, if you're really alive inside, then of course there's no problem. I mean, if you're living with somebody in one little room and there's a life going on between you and the person you're living with, well, then a whole adventure can be going on right in that room. But there's always the danger that things can go dead. Then I really do think you have to kind of become a hobo or something, you know, like Kerouac and go out on the road. I really believe that. You know, it's not that wonderful to spend your life on the road. I mean, my own overwhelming preference is to stay in that room if you can. But, you know, if you live with somebody for a long time, people are constantly saying, well, of course it's not as great as it used to be, but that's only natural. The first blush of a romance goes, and that's the way it has to be. Now, I totally disagree with that. But I do think that you have to constantly ask yourself the question with total frankness. Is your marriage still a marriage? Is the sacramental element there? Just as you have to ask about the sacramental element in your work, is it still there? I mean, it's a very frightening thing, Wally, to have to suddenly realize that, my God, I thought I was living my life, but in fact, I haven't been a human being. I've been a performer. I haven't been living, I've been acting. I've, I've acted the role of the father. I've acted the role of the husband. I've acted the role of the friend. I've acted the role of the writer, a director, what have you. I've lived in the same room with this person, but I haven't really seen them. I haven't really heard them. I haven't really been with them. Yeah, I know some people are just sometimes uh, existing just side by side. I mean, uh, the other person's uh, face could just turn into a great wolf's face and uh, just wouldn't be noticed. And it wouldn't be noticed, no. It wouldn't be noticed. I mean, when I was in Israel a little while ago, I mean, I have this picture of Chiquita that was taken when she... I always carry it with me. It was taken when she was about... 26 or something, and it's in summer, and she's stretched out on a terrace in a sort of old-fashioned long skirt that's kind of pulled up, and she's slim and sensual and beautiful, and I've always looked at that picture and just thought about just how sexy she looks. And then last year in Israel, I looked at the picture, and I realized that that face in the picture was the saddest face in the world. That girl at that time was just lost, so sad and so alone. You know, I've been carrying this picture for years and not ever really seeing what it is. You know, I just never really looked at the picture. And then at a certain point, I realized I'd just gone for a good 18 years unable to feel, except in the most extreme situations. I mean, to some extent, I still had the ability to live in my work. That was why I was such a work junkie. That was why I felt that every play that I did was a matter of my life and my death. But in my real life, I was dead. I was a robot. You know, I didn't even allow myself to get angry or annoyed. I mean, you know, today, Chiquita, Nicholas, Marina, all day long, as people do, they do things that annoy me, and they say things that annoy me, and today, I get annoyed, and they say, why are you annoyed? And I say, because you're annoying, you know. And when I allowed myself to consider the possibility of not spending the rest of my life with Chiquita, I realized that what I wanted most in life was to always be with her. But at that time, I hadn't learned what it would be like to let yourself react to another human being. And if you can't react to another person, then there's no possibility of action or interaction. And if there isn't, I don't really know what the word love means, except duty, obligation, sentimentality, fear. <laughs> I don't know about you, Wally, but I... I just have to put myself into a kind of training program to learn how to be a human being. I mean, how did I feel about anything? I didn't know. What kind of things did I like? What kind of people did I really want to be with, you know? And the only way that I could think of to find out was to just cut out all the noise and stop performing all the time and just listen to what was inside me. See, I think a time comes when you need to do that. Now, maybe in order to do it, you have to go to the Sahara, and maybe you can do it at home. But you need to cut out the noise. 